Scotty Bowers, 88 years old. You're no. sitting there telling me you're 88. 89. 89? I'm almost 90. I'm approaching well, 90. Well, I, I want to grow up in the farm. You're from a farm of Illinois. Right. Grew up in Illinois. Yes. And wrote this book of Hollywood. Okay, yeah. A guy from Illinois, a young boy. Coming to hot, but you joined the Marines. When did you join the Marines? At 18? 18. At really? At the very beginning of World War II, uh -huh. the beginning of 1942. So you left Illinois and said, goodbye, I'm on my way to see the world? Yes. I see. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. So tell me, Scotty, about the uh, life of the Marines. Uh, you know, I used to work, <laughs> I used to work and entertain the troops, and there's not a Marine I have never met that you can't turn over. Oh, is that true? Well, I, I come on, Scotty. No, I don't know. Uh, in the Marine, during the Marine Corps in World War II, right? If you're going to do something, you better do it while you're in town, not while you're in the Marine Corps. Marines, they'll yes, kick yes, you out yes. of the goddamn totally Marine different. Corps in a second. Yeah. The Army, you can get by with that bullshit, but not in the Marine Corps. Uh huh. Why the Army? Because the Army. Hey, remember, if you were fat and wore glasses, you could get in the Army. Right. If you were fat and wore glasses, you couldn't get in the Marine Corps. You are good looking, though. I'll tell you something. You're a handsome guy. Look at you, man. I want to show my audience. Look at you, this Marine. 18. I was 18. 18 then. years old? God, Scotty, you're a hot guy. Tell me something. Stationed in Okinawa? No, no. not stationed in Okinawa. The war was over when Okinawa came along. Oh, really? Absolutely. Okinawa was the end of the war. They dropped a bomb and that was the end of the war. Ah, okay. The 6th okay. Division was in Okinawa. The 6th Marine, the 6th, the, the Marine Corps had 6th Divisions. The 6th right. Division went to Okinawa in April of 1945 and then the war was over. And you came here in the 40s? I came here in 19, for, early in 42, 42 from Chicago to San Diego in the Marine Corps. I see. And you stayed. How did you... From, as a young Marine, they all come to Hollywood, young Marines. Why is that? Yeah. Well, if you're stationed in San Diego and you have the weekend off, and the weekend is Saturday night, basically, right. you go to Los Angeles or uh -huh. Hollywood. Hollywood. That's, that's why during World War II, Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, between Highland and... Ivar. Between the Brea, Vine and La Brea, and, yeah. there'd be three and 4,000 guys in uniform, Army, Navy, and Marine Corps. Right. And Sunset Boulevard was the same way, yeah. just packed solid. Well, we had a USO there, too. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't the USO that did it. Is The USO was on Sunset Boulevard. Right. But it wasn't the USO that did it as much as people just being in Hollywood. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And... Uh, Young man. What? 18. How did you get involved with all these stars? I got involved but, with most of them, some when I got out of the Marine you were, Corps. You were in a, doing the service. I mean, you yeah. were g doing gas, is that right? Pumping gas? Because I spent most of my time overseas, not in Hollywood or not in San Diego. Right. In the Marine Corps, you train and you train and you train. And as a matter of fact, they make it so difficult on you. You're goddamn glad to go overseas. That's the nice thing about the Marine Corps or the clever thing about the Marine Corps. Okay. But how did you get involved with this by me Hollywood stars? By just meeting different people. In Where were you at the time? You were pumping gas at a place on Hollywood on Boulevard? On Hollywood Boulevard, Hollywood Boulevard and Van Ness. Van Ness. At a Richfield gas station just after World War II. Right. Where it was I, called Richfield? Richfield. Yeah. Richfield spelled out in big letters, Richfield. I remember that. And uh, that's where I really got in the business. In the business. In the business. Which, which you're talking about in the business, getting to know, getting, getting to, to know you. Getting to know you. Know all the stars. Getting I mean, to know. They all used to come in there, from well, Randolph Scott to. Hey, you meet one and you meet the other. A few came in and a few heard about it and came in, so the word got around very rapidly. Were you pimping at the time? Or were you pimping for somebody? Well, or you could call it pimping. I mean, some people you might call it, some might call it procuring, some might procuring. call it being a nice guy. Oh, helping others. Some might call it fixing people up with people. Right. There's right. different yes, ways the way of putting express. it. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I agree. Who's the first star? Very, very first star you met. Do you uh, remember? Well, the very first star I met at the gas station was Walter Pigeon. But prior to Walter that, I, I met Cary, Cary Grant and Randolph Scott. They were lovers, weren't they? Yes. Randolph Scott. They had a house. And the, uh, they had beach. one. They beach. had one at the beach in Santa Monica Beach. It was uh -huh. Barbara Hutton's house, and they had one 
just behind the Chateau Marmont, a yes. Marmont Lane or Avenue. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Randolph Scott was a masculine uh, cowboy. Real sweetheart of a guy. You would tell anyone that he was gay, you would, they would say no. How did he hide that? Well, there's a, remember, there's a lot of people that aren't gay that do gay things, but they really aren't gay. I you, don't know what you mean by that. You know what I mean by that? No, I don't. There are a lot of straight people. Never trust a naked. Uh -huh. But they aren't gay, in other words, in appearance yeah, yeah. or anything. There are a lot of straight acting people. And there are other people who look gay and act gay. Yes, yes, yes. You, do you know what I'm talking about? I have to be careful here because I'm over taping in Hollywood at oh. the Beverly Hills High. Oh. <laughs> and I, we have to edit that one, that oh, word. But okay. that's okay. Um, full service. That's, you wrote a book about this now. A full service. Is said Your life. As, as I mentioned, the original title was going to be A Gas Station on Hollywood Boulevard after the gas station. Uh -huh. And I said, that's a little long for a title and uninteresting. Why not call it full service? Because there is such a thing as a full service gas station. Right. But Scotty, tell me something about uh, who encouraged you? Some of the people like, um, what's his name, Gore Vidal? Did he encourage you to do the book? Uh, I want to know, did he do some writing on this book? I want to know that. Uh, several people encouraged me to do the book. Uh, Gore was very instrumental in getting the book published. I would say without Gore, the book would not have been published. Oh, that's what I've been watching. That's it. But he put that in for you. Did he add things in there telling you stars, all the people that he hated and everything about? He hated a lot uh, of people, you know. Well, yes, he did. He was a very vicious man. He was not very, I know he's your friend. But he wasn't not very nice to certain people. Well, he was honest is all. Is that the word you That's use? what you call honest? being honest. Okay. okay. That's what you call thinking the right way. I mean, uh, he was honest to himself and to the, about people rather than pretending that he liked them. If how he, did you get to know him? I got to know him when World War II ended, which was when it was 63 or 64 really? years ago. when he just got out of the Army where he'd been up in the Aleutian Islands, and he came down here. And he used to come in the gas station. And it was very popular with that book he wrote. Oh, yeah. It was a gay book. Uh, yeah, he's written quite a few books. Yeah, many. I don't know just which ones he wrote at the time. but The, the one that really made him for a star. Um, 18 years old, Marines coming over to Hollywood, uh, being uh, mixed with these big superstars from Illinois. Come yeah. on, look at me, Scotty. How do you feel about this? Now I've, you got a book, and now you're 88? Good I've, God. I've, I've always felt good about everything, meaning it, that, those. I felt good about the people I know, the people I dealt with, the book I wrote. Uh, I've. You oh, said something about Spencer Tracy yeah. and Katherine Hepburn in the book. Yes. Is it really true about Spencer Tracy in the book? I mean, Katherine Hepburn, I know she, but Spencer Tracy. That, that's the one that I'm hard to understand. Well, Spencer Tracy, uh, the way he was and what he did, he really didn't admit to himself even. Oh, he didn't even know? Well, th he knew but would never admit it. Admit it, admit yes, it. yes. Meaning he was always rather loaded, rather drunk. They were drunk, yeah. And then whatever happened. And what happens when you're drunk that I've dealt with that. And yes. what happens when you're drunk, he doesn't want to remember the next day. Yes, yes, yes. In yes. detail, that is. Yes, yes. You met a lot of them in Hollywood like that. Uh, some. Some? I don't think so. I think this whole book is like that. Well, you mean it didn't want people didn't to know? people to know, yes. No, a lot of them were not alcoholics or lushes, and uh, a lot of people in the book, uh, people knew about. I mean, people that knew them knew about it. But oh, you mean like uh, Tab Hunter and Jamie Dean? Uh, they knew the lives of most of those people, yes. Farley Granger. Right. Yeah. Rock Hudson, you knew right. Rock very well. Right. Tell me about Rock Hudson. Rock Hudson was a uh, great guy, though. Yeah, I met I met him way back in 1947 or 48 too, back in uh -huh. those days. And at that time, he was living in North Hollywood with a a guy who was a car hop in a drive-in. Dolores's drive-in. <laughs> no, that drive-in that used to be right there across from Book Soup. There used to be a drive-in where oh, Capitol yes, Records. Oh yes, I do know was. that one. Yeah, I remember. It was a drive-in. Uh huh right on the corner of Holloway Drive and uh -huh. Sunset. Right. And, and the kid worked in there as a car hop and, and Rock lived with him and they lived over in North Hollywood and they had a brand new 
1947 car and an uh, Irish setter dog, and uh, oh. that's when and how I met Rock. Someone's trying to tell me something, but I'm not going to say nothing. <laughs> um, you know, today things are open. Everything is open. Yeah. And you can get away with it. But did you try to write this book about, um, because the Kenzie Report opened the thing. The Kenzie Report opened the things for A little everybody. bit, yeah, a little the bit, sex. yes. They opened it all, so people feel more comfortable. Are people, would they read your book, Scotty? Women especially. Yeah. I see they're very accepting. They're accepting this book. Yes. I mean, if they, you did this yeah. five, ten years ago, I don't think they would accept it. Why are they accepting this book I today? don't know. Uh, I, I would, which Matt will tell you, half the letters I got are from women who think the book was wonderful and everything about it is wonderful, the fact that it's written that way. Uh -huh. So, as you said, people do kind of accept it, and I'm sure there's some that don't, but most people do. Who some of the people like um, Bob Hope didn't like him? I was in Vietnam. He was a mean man. Everybody loved Bob Hope. Oh, That's right. Everybody loved. Me him. did not like Bob him. Bob Hope was and Dolores, mean. Doris, Dolores, How did you his feel wife. About that? I like Bob Hope. He was a nice guy. He was certainly a nicer guy than Bing Crosby was. Bob, well, Bing Crosby has problems, yeah. Yeah, with Bob, his Hope children was, and Bob Hope was a very nice guy. Everyone liked him. He loved hookers and always, he loved fixed, hookers. always fixed his uh, army captain friends up with cookers who were in charge of entertainment Right. when they were in town. As a matter of fact, his favorite hooker, uh, Barbara Payton, married one of those army captains. Terrible life, Barbara Payton. Yeah. Getting back how oh, she died. Sweet. What a, she was like a, a she, street she lady. She and died as a complete loser. Loser, yes. Right. I knew her very well. And she'd been the a bar and She'd sunset. been a sweet, yeah, she used to go into coaching horses there. That's right, coaching horses. And and live right on the corner. And she got to and where gorgeous. she. Gorgeous. She, she got to a point where she'd lay, if you, lay you if you bought her a beer. A and beer. that was That's really right. what you call the bottom away. of the barrel yeah. bit. Yeah. She went to construction workers. It, was, workers it was very sad to see her go downhill like she, she did. She was married to Franchon Tone, wasn't she? She married uh, Franchon Tone once. One of them, like Jean Wallace, yeah. And right. she was uh, oh, uh, married a couple, three times. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Who's some of your favorite people that you got to really know? Uh, because later in life, you know, you start doing catering. 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 How did you come into catering, Scotty? Catering. Cooking, well, all hey, that. Hey, even, even when I was fixing people up, you could call that catering too, couldn't you? Yes, 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 of Okay, course. I just continued my catering business into food. Uh -huh. Went from people to food. You certainly did. Now, good food. You, you <laughs> cater great. And cater all the best people in Beverly Hills, here in L.A., Beverly yeah, Hills. Yes, I worked for Bel Air. Of, I worked for a lot of nice people who... I got to know over the years and work for them continually. Uh -huh. Who's some of the favorites you have that you work for? You must have some favorites. Well, one of my favorites is John Seitz. John Seitz John is Seitz. the one who owns the Beverly Hills Courier. Right. The paper, the Beverly Hills Courier. And John lives in Bel Air. And John is a real sweetheart of a guy. Uh -huh. And I'm very fond of John. And of course, Ellie Valley, who I've worked That's for. That's Rudy her, Valley's wife. Her and Rudy years ago. I love and yeah. still work for her. They I had would, a nice house, didn't I they? Would, I could sit here for hours and name off all the nice people I work for and know and like. Everybody loves Scotty Bowers. You know yeah. why they love you so much? And they're buying your book, and your book is so fa Because you, just to use the word, nice guy. You're, you, you're a nice guy. You don't want to put anyone down. Well, you well, wrote a book about him, but that's, that's nothing bad about him. No. You're just saying what they like. Right, my and what they enjoy in life. I have another book coming up. I'm writing about Matt Turnauer. Ah, okay. Yeah, about the sex life of Matt Turnauer. Now, who is he? He's a well-known person around town. He's a name actor and everything. Uh -huh. Matt Turnauer. Okay. Everybody knows him or heard about him. Uh huh. You're writing a book about him? Yeah. Eighty-eight. Keep writing. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. God, eighty-nine, Scotty. Please, <laughs> I tell you something. Who gave you the title of "Sex Lives of the Hollywood Stars"? That's kind of an interesting title. That they just threw that in. I think the publishing. Who's, the, who's the writer? Helped you with it. Uh, Lionel Friedberg. English. Yes. 
English. Kinky. So. He's kinky. No. I'm using the word kinky because that's a kinky word, English. Oh, oh yeah. They use, that's the English kinky. And he's very businesslike. And, is uh, he? Yeah, very businesslike. And uh, he is a writer. He's a studio writer and has written a lot of things. He has two or three Emmys for writing. But the basic one is Gore Vidal. He is the man that got Scotty going away, taken away. Well, and he's the one. Out here. You're selling more books. You sold over a million copies here in America. Right. In a, a million. Yeah. Sitting there, Scotty, look at me. Yeah. What are you going to do with all that money? 89. Uh, what am I going to do with it? Yeah, come on. I, I'm going to donate it to the Matt Turnour Foundation. Now, I don't know who this man is you keep well, telling he, me. Oh, I'll tell Go you. Go ahead. I'll tell you in a little while. Matter of fact, I may even move him in with you. Move in with me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Matt, huh? Yes. You've got this wonderful money you're having, all this gorgeous. They gave you a big, big sum. You're making more money than, and your books are being, how did you get on the 10th? Of the best, best selling list? That's it. By by the books that were sold and by all the good advertisement they did on the book. That's what put So the were. publishing really pushed that book, didn't it? Well, the they? publishing company pushed it right into position with all the advertisement they did. That helps. That that did help. You bet it did. And you've been appearing everywhere in this town, all over New York, San Francisco. You've done Vanity Fair. Tell me about Vanity Fair. What articles are you getting? Tell me about it. Well, uh, th there have been 15 different pitches they've given. The biggest one was Seven Minutes on CBS. They did a thing of you on CBS? Seven Minutes on CBS. Seven Minutes, okay. And of course, the, the uh, New York Times with their big pitch, and the Washington Post, and the Los Angeles Times, and the People Magazine, and uh, on The View, they had On The View, too. Tell me, how do you get in all these great, great, Great publicity and talking about you, Scott. I would say that was all done by having a good agent. The agent of the book. That's important. Who's a, who's a sweetheart of a guy, too. You've got to have an agent. And he's the one that does, he has all those good connections, I'm sure. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, the publishing company's doing well, very Well, the publishing very company, well. that's a combination of the agent and the publishing company together who are friends and know each and other. And Lionel is a great writer. He's yes. helped you with this. Did yeah. he give you some ideas? Uh... Or, or did uh, no? He just uh, did the writing bit, but ideas. I I you had just talked to him. And I had the ideas. Yeah, Gore Vidal. Did he really come on, Scotty? Did he? Is your friend? Did he have anything to do with the writing of this? Gore, or he talked about the Duke of Windsor. Is that his idea about the Duke of Windsor? No, that's my idea. Is it? Yes. You met them. I knew them. You knew them. Tell me about them. Please. Well, Wally and, and Edward, uh, the family called him David. I don't know where that came in. The, that was a family name, David. Uh -huh. And and Wally, of course, if you knew them and got to know them, you'd realize he was kind of a shy, bashful guy. He was shy. He was shy and bashful, uh -huh. and she was a ball buster. Here he is. She's, she was, yeah, she she was, was the ball buster of the uh -huh. uh, operation or the outfit. Uh -huh. How about Earl Flynn? I knew him, too. He was a great hey. guy. A nice-looking guy and a nice guy, who died when he was 50, which was a shame because yeah. Errol Flynn was a drank, real drank himself to death. Uh, you can say that. That's just about what happened. Yeah. And not eating, just drinking. I interviewed his daughters. Their and daughters. A, and a very nice guy, and I always liked Errol Flynn. Uh huh. This is you, Scotty. It's your brothers or something? That's my brother and sister and I. Yes. Your brother and your sisters. So there's three of you in the family. There were. Are three. your brothers and sisters living? No, my brother was with me in the Marine Corps and was killed at I Iwo Jima. Oh, he was? Yes. He was young, huh? And how about your sister? She's still living in a little town in Illinois. In Illinois? And how yeah. does she, does she know anything about this book? No, she doesn't. Ah, see, Illinois, you can get away, disappear. You can get they... away with it if you live in a little town. That's right. She'll probably never know. She'll and never if she know. Do, and if she does, I'll say, gee, thank you for telling me. I didn't even know about it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Scotty. <laughs> I love I love the high places you've been. The high places. Yeah, Gary Grant. Come on, let's talk about Gary Grant. You knew him. Gary Grant. Yeah. Yes, I knew him for many years. I mean, from World War II at the beginning until he died many years later. 
I mean, not too long ago. He was bi, wasn't he? Yeah, <clears throat> I he, mean, he was real. There bi. are many people that are bi. Well, Monty Cliff was bi too. But no, no, no. Uh, Monty Cliff was gay. Gay. And there's a difference between being bi, bi and gay. gay. Yeah. You know what bi like means? Like tab hunter, tab you know what, hunter. You know what bi means, don't yes, you? Yes, of course. They what does go it for mean? both. It means bye bye to girls and hello boys. Bye bye. Okay, that's a okay. good one. <laughs> no, they go for both. Farley, same as uh, you knew. You know Tony. Did you know Tony uh, Perkins, Anthony? Oh yeah. Tell me about Anthony Perkins. He was a very lonely man, very dark. He he was. He was kind of a sad guy. Wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. No, I knew him and. No, not what you call buddy, buddy real, but I knew him and fixed him up and we knew each other. For, he lived up in Laurel Canyon. He did, didn't he? Yeah, had a, had a wife and kids and everything. Hmm. Troy Donahue. You ever to meet Troy? Yeah, years ago. Didn't know him too well, but knew Troy. I'm going to go and throw a name at you. Tyrone Power. Well, it's Tyrone Power. Beautiful man. Tri I knew his wife. What? I met him in 1942 and knew him until he died, and we were good friends. Yes, he was Cesar Romero's friend. They were yeah. together. Yeah, C Cesar Romero was a nice guy. I liked him, too. Uh -huh. Very sweet guy. <laughs> Matter of fact, he <coughs> was always up a, a block from where you live. He was up at Alfredo's building Alfredo's all the time. Alfredo's on Crescent Heights. Crescent right. Little Fontaine apartments there. And he always ran around with Sybil Brand. Oh, Sybil Brand. Remember Sybil? Lover. Yes, of course, I knew Sybil very well. Sybil lived to be about 103 years old. Did that, you meet Edith Piaf? I or knew Edith Dietrich? Piaf, yes. Dietrich, you knew Dietrich. Uh, Marlena? No, I did not know Marlena Dietrich. I saw her, but didn't know. A lot of people I'd see, but didn't really know them. No, you met them at the party. No, just because you see someone parties. doesn't mean you, you know them. them. Yeah, see, I, Scotty Bauer, you, you are famous, famous. Party giver, I mean. Yeah, but Edith Piaf I knew well at the time because she came here and stayed here, and her and I stayed together for a month or more, just about a month. Who used to make the menus up? Did you or the, your uh, the ladies? ladies what that what you menus? With? Menu for the catering. The, the if you want to be successful in catering, and I'm not talking about big catering, studio catering, and things, but no, no, little personal catering. Right. Let the person of the house make the menu up. As ah. a matter of fact. Let them even buy the food. The reason being is, I learned long ago, you buy good food, whether it's meat, whatever it is, and the lady might say, you know, that was very expensive and the meat was tough. I said, you know what? You buy the meat from now on and I'll come and cook it. That way you can't <laughs> complain about it being tough. Uh -huh. And I got on that kick. Let them buy the goddamn food. They have nothing to do anyhow. Uh -huh. Then they can, and they know what they're getting and what they've got, and they never complained about the food was wrong or bad. Mm -hmm. You follow? <laughs> Full service, Scotty Bowers, yes. The Adventures in Hollywood, and The Secrets, Sex Lives of the Stars. Movie? Movie? Is it going to be a film? Well, a, f a few people, three or four people, have talked about it. I don't know just how they're going to do a film. This book is in number one, but many yeah. weeks, many yeah. weeks, many weeks. The, the new books have a title across say New York Times bestseller. Yes, they, yes. It's written right across the book. You've been the number one bestsellers, everything. You're uh, yeah. doing well. You're making millions. You're doing extreme. Hey, you know, I was talking to Grace Robbins, you know, Harold Robbins' wife, right? She I know her, book. Gracie, very well. Of course you know Grace. And she can't get her book done, and it's hard she, to get a book done. Yeah, but she's been writing a book for the last 25 years. You know why? Because she didn't put any sex in there. That's and I right. told her to write, read Scotty Bauer's book, put sex in it, and the Will that sell? Um, if she adds sex to it, if she makes that maybe the main topic of it, she should have written years ago about years ago about that. about the things that her and Harold did did on the yacht. Did, did at home. I've been at, I've been at. Har oh, they carried on. I've yeah. been at their place when Harold has got. She's upstairs with somebody in the bed. Uh -huh. He's downstairs having some girl do him on a table. Some yeah. girl's doing his Absolutely. manicure and another girl's hung in yes, his yes, yes, yeah, yes. That's the same Harold time. Robbins and Mrs. Robbins, yep. Yeah. They carried on. They should have she should have put that all in the book. She was yeah. she was ashamed to put things like that in the book. No, but I don't she should have put that in the book because just uh, little You're not ashamed of this book, are you? Well, no, because there's nothing that uh, is upsetting about it. Uh -huh. People ask me about it's this. Every, that's what you call everyday living. It is. As a matter of fact, I should have t titled the book Everyday Living. 
God, Dave Bauer, I love your way of positive thinking. That's what you think makes you live so long and so good and healthy. Look, there's nothing wrong with Scott E. Bauer. There's no what? arthritis. Look, I'm walking around. You're looking good. Look at that hair. But there's th and you're good looking as ever. There's three things, I, I think. What? Uh, if you're on the list to live long. Right. Not to be a smoker, number one. Right. Not to be, as smoking is worse than drinking. Not to be a smoker, not to be a drinker really, and drink a lot of water, and be a friend of Matt Turner's and you got it made. You're right, you're right. You know? So you served a lot of liquor to a lot of people. A yeah. lot of people in your time. You I don't licked, drink at all, do you? I, I licked a lot of people and served a lot of <laughs> liquor too. <laughs> you don't drink at all? Huh? You don't drink at all? No. Not at all. I mean, if I go to someone's house and they bring me a drink, I don't come on square and say I don't drink. I take it and nurse it along. Maybe the three quarters of the drink is still there four hours later. Uh -huh. But I don't come on that square and say, no, I don't drink. Whatever you give me, I'll take. Uh -huh. Scotty, thank you. This interview today is um, true loves. What's this mean? What's true, true loves all about? What's true love about? Yeah. Are there true loves in life? Uh, there are a few true loves in life, yes. Do you have one? Uh, no, uh, not many people. But you've been married. Not many people have true. You have been married. Yeah, but a true love is a different thing. A true love is when you see two people who've been together for 30 years and they go down the street looking at each other, holding hands and everything, and every once in a while you see true love, but there's not much of what you call true love. Right. There are people who there's love involved, but true love is a different thing. You've been married. I would, I would venture to say true love is... A, a person with their little puppy dog and the way they wag their tail. <laughs> okay. And then you can tell that's true love because a dog's tail never lies. <laughs> you love animals, I see. Oh, yeah. Scotty Bowers, you have a daughter. I did have a daughter, yes. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, I see. Only one child? Yes. I see. I mean, one child that How I, can, I can talk about. How I've many had, times have you been married? I've had of four children, but they were business-wise. Oh, okay. Business-wise is when you see someone to make a child and never see them. You have done that? Yes. You really have? Yes, I have. Helping people getting their uh, card, green card, uh, or uh, what? What you call artificial insemination. Okay. <laughs> Only real insemination. Um, There's a difference. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, Rock Hudson was a very, very nice man. I met him so many times. Yeah. He was always... R Rock he, was always a gentleman, you know. Yeah. Tell me about... Look at her. Barbara. Oh, you do have Barbara here. She's beautiful. I want the audience to see. Look at her. Barbara Payton. Is, isn't that... Perkins says she's beautiful. She's a beautiful lady. She, the way she did it in her life at the end. Is yeah, this... Am I seeing what I'm seeing right now? What's that? Oh, my God. Mae West. You knew Mae, did you? Yeah. What kind of woman was she? I've never met her, really. Uh, she was sort and sweet and, and rather demanding. Uh, my friend who lived with her never got out much. Once he lived with her, he never got around much anymore. Really? Oh, yeah. He, did. he just sat there and listened to the radio and things like that back years ago. She kept him right there, right? We kept him right there. If he'd come up to the gas station, uh, she'd call before he even got there, wanted him to come home. I said, for Cressy, he, he left the, your place. It takes... At the most, 10 minutes to get up to the gas station, five minutes. He's not here yet, and you already want him to come home. You know, I mean, that's, she was rather possessive. So your gas station in the 40s was very, very popular. In the, in basically in the 50s, in late the 50s? 40s and 50s, 50s, yeah. Very popular. It, Did everybody knew what it was all about, though? People knew? Well, if you know, Skip, the word gets around, you could not advertise. Right. If you had money, you couldn't advertise as well as they pass the word around uh -huh. about the gas station. Meaning in a matter of weeks, everything was all over the goddamn, not all over the world, it was all over the world to friends who, you know, pass the word around right, about right. where to meet someone, where to see someone. Uh -huh. And er the advertising was done for me by people, mm -hmm. so, which is always nice. So how do you feel about this book, Scotty? You didn't tell me about who's, who what, your woman. Who's going to play your life in the book, in the movie? Well, I, I thought of maybe you. No, it. not me. And if you, my, my friend Matt Turner, I think, is going to play me. Uh-huh. He's going to play me. He would well, be perfect for that. 
I think this the young boy, what's his name, the Italian boy who won the Oscar? Um, the boy won the what's Oscar. his name? Can't think of his name right now. He's he's a wonderful guy. I think he would be great to do you. Yeah. He's got dark hair, curly hair. He did that gay movie in San Francisco. Oh, the Harvey Milk thing, you mean? Yeah, that movie he did. What's the guy's name that won the Oh, award? yeah, I know who you mean. Yes, James I. James Franco. Who? James Franco. That's it, James yeah. Franco. Several He's going to be bigger than ever. He's got a new movie coming out. Several people have said James, James Franco, Franco would be good for James Franco is ideal for you. I, that's who I see. Yeah. James Franco. Several people have said that, yeah. He's great. He, I don't and know, but he, he knows that. He knows what to do <coughs> with that. Yeah. Scotty, thank you so much. You're welcome. Wonderful Skippy. chatting with you this afternoon yeah. in my little studio here in Beverly Hills. Yeah, it was very nice in here. Yeah, it's fun. Thank you, Scotty. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank you.